an exercise. I'm going to bring my journal. <laughs> Hey, there is a seat over here. If anybody wants this one, we'll save that for the next person. I want to be able to see your whiteboard that you're going to write on. Okay. <laughs> so, welcome everybody. This is Freedom Fridays, Free the Dome, right? We're freeing ourselves from these domes that are can be seen as veils, as imprints, as like a ceiling you're hitting. Um, so we're, we're, we are playing with our innocence and our curiosity and our coming back into our inner child to look at a lot of these topics that we maybe were told that it was impossible or, um, you know, we created, we started allowing these domes to really stop us from being fully immersed in the unified field and fully immersed in our our keys to enlightenment, which is called imagination. Uh, so yeah, so today's, I'm really excited about this series this month coming online because it, has anybody seen the Avatar movie or series, mm -hmm. Avatar? Oh, it's not the blue one. I don't know. I, I mean, oh, I, I might've, okay. I've seen something in a movie or a series, mm -hmm. I can't remember. Oh, you're th are you thinking of the animated oh, one? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Like the, the so what we're talking about, right? So okay. we're talking about yeah, Erica Benning. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me give you a cue on these chairs. So, yes, the arrows will, will get you to a good setting. If you go zero gravity, you'll probably be out and not be able to really pay attention. <laughs> um, but we usually, when we do anything here, I do like to at least put us through some kind of guided meditation. And that, at that point, it's awesome to lay back. So coming back. So this month's all about earth bending today. Next Friday will be, we'll go up the elemental scale of our own energy center. So our earth is our root, our knees and our feet and our body itself. As well as gross matter or the understanding of gross matter. <laughs> And next Friday will be water, water bending, which I love water bending. I wish I could take us to the beach to do the water bending. Maybe we will, I don't know, but at least send off with an assignment uh, to, to bend the waves. And then fire bending and then air bending. And essentially all of this is ether bending because we realize that the whole space the, the whole space that is all that we are outside of the body, all of consciousness is ether. It's the fifth element. It's um, the Akash. Akash means ether. And so in, stored within our pure consciousness and the unified field is everything. And so if I slow down the spin and create more density on charge, which also all of ether all of space is charge. And when you spin the charge or the rotation of charge creates mass and the spin rate of charge creates time. And so charge meaning a plus and a minus. And when those start rotating and they come to middle called centripetal, they actually can implode. And that's why Dan Winter's winter is, um, formula of Planck fire is so on my brain right now because of how magical it is to really get those keys and understand it. So pretty much every time I've been talking the past couple of weeks, and I'm sure we'll move on, I'm going to keep bringing this up till it, till it congeals and crystallizes for you in new levels. Um, because it's powerful when you realize that that spinning in the ether, those charges spinning is actually what's creating time and what's creating mass. And when they do go central pedal right to Planck, whether you're looking at Planck length or Planck, or the other way you can measure it, I think is time, but I'm usually working with length. When you go to that point, it implodes. The positive, positive and negative cancel each other out and implode. And that's how we then, when we're looking at our, our avatar, the body, we're using this body to come out of bindings and domes and places where we're literally, uh, you know, working on our maturity of the energy center so we can stabilize them and become more stellar with our emotions. And, you know, of course, part of it may be to release some charge and be like righteous anger and be like, oh, you know, you're in the woods. 
um, or you're in front of somebody because it needed to like move that energy. But ultimately, as you evolve or come back into the true you, this huge being that you truly be out of these stories of the incarnation, you learn to become like, you know, a master, a monk, a beautiful, radiant starlight being that you are that is stabilized at each energy center and can witness and hold space for somebody who else is discharging. Mm -hmm. And so that then you become this great gift for so many who can hold space. And sometimes you're meant to role play. There's a lot of times where I know, like, I really don't care anymore, but yet I know I'm going to drop into a character to help that other being in front of me go ahead and fully live it out and move the energy and discharge, right? So when we are finding those places in the lower, especially three energy centers where we are entangled and bound, and it's keeping us from doing this caduceus, right? The, the medical symbol before that was actually just the sign of your Kundalini rising from the triple spiral. I should say triple and a half spiral at your base of that dormant energy. When it rises, and you're moving up the energy centers, it's golden mean ratio integers, and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller till it gets to right here at the penile at Planck, and it implodes. Those two charges implode right there. And that's when we squeeze out back into the field of consciousness that we actually are. So we come out of all domes by getting back in the full array. And some of us, You'll notice where you are in the full array when yesterday, I think it was, um, we talked about how like, oh, in your meditation, you were actually looked down at your feet and you were a bird, yeah. right? So that's in the longitudinal array. You're realizing that you can drop into bird form, you know, or you can drop in anywhere, another version of yourself, look out those set of eyeballs. And really that's kind of like by locating being at two places at once. But essentially, you are everywhere. And there is some ethics with that that I just want to bring up. On a side note, that, you know, dropping into other ind individual souls, central channels, without permission is not really necessary. But someone would say, well, we're all one. Why does that matter? Well, as you're maturing up your energetic ladder, there will be a time that, yes, you actually can be omnipresent and actually realize you're, you're all of it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So coming back. So where you're finding in these first three energy centers of usually around survival issues that you're still maturing out of because you bought into the, the dome that said, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. You need to cling to this. You need to, you know, you need to survive when actually you didn't understand that you were this eternal being that is perfected that when you're in coherence of your feelings and your mind, that of course it always fills in the gap and the thing arrives for you because you're it, you're actually all of this. And of course you're always going to take care of yourself and bring yourself what you need. And it's just getting in that coherence, the maturity up the energetic centers to be able to have that heart and mind coherence. Meaning if you have some, inner child wound that you're still not feeling worthy or you still, you've had so many times when you were like watching your parents scramble for money, you know, and you still have all these imprints of like survival, you know, you may need to, you may be like, well, I know, I know it, I feel it, I see it, but yet you have these overlays coming in that wiggle their head as far as some other imprint that keeps showing itself. And those are your perfect opportunity to go, well, let me clean that up. You know, let me rewrite that. Let me get a greater understanding, which any greater understanding, you hear me say understanding a lot because it's just really when you understand law, you realize you want to say understanding and understanding because you don't want to be under anybody. Anyways, when you get the realization that cleaning that up is going to free you from any dome and get you back up the ladder. Okay. I think I was had another thing I want to say, but it'll come if I need to. Um, so the earth bending. So earth bending, first, just what does that mean to you? Let's just get a round table, your name, and what does earth bending mean to you? It is about um, earth bending. I don't know. It just 
I, I sense maybe it means changing the physical form of something with your mind. Cool. Changing the physical form of something with your mind. There's no wrong answer because you're the brilliant being who has this curiosity to even say what you think it means. That's the L. For me, I just feel that you visualize it and it appears. Okay, that's what I think when I see it here. Right, like the because you're able to blueprint it and see it and visualize it, it's going to gross matter in the earth yes. lowest density. Once you appear, once it, it comes to your mind's eye, then all of a sudden it's present. Got and, it. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm Shannon, and for earth bending, it to me feels like the inner power that we have to create and bring forward what we're calling in i mean mm-hmm. i know some people say it's manifesting but when you think of bending it's like moving and transforming to fit my best yeah my highest awesome i'm heather um i think earth bending for me is recognizing that the earth itself has its own frequency and tapping into that and uh, manipulating it the way that to to do all those other things to create an outcome that I already have in my mind right so bringing it down and grounding it yeah 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 that 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 frequency exists so rather than trying to make earth something else yeah I'm getting into that frequency that already is but then shifting it mm-hmm. to the outcome that I have pictured or visualized cool. yeah mm-hmm. well my name's Margie and agree with everyone's uh, definition. Uh, I would think of, I thought of it when I saw the title mm-hmm. as just to uh, the ability to facilitate facilitate a change, mm-hmm. the ability that I have to facilitate a shift, mm-hmm. change, literally anywhere on the plane. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. My name's uh, Kay. And for me, earth bending is pretty much everybody's perspective. And what I keep hearing is like it, we can create heaven on earth mm-hmm. and have earth um, shift its vibration as long as we shift ours. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. So, you know, earth being that most density and so the rotation of spin that creates the, that density we call earth form usually looking at the natural world. Like, so what we want to look at with the natural world are where are those places that we really want to be able to easily earth and then bend, meaning manipulate, um, facilitate, control. I mean, it's more of like just getting an alignment and allowing that to already show itself because it's perfected at the earth plane. Mm -hmm. So seeds, right? Learning how to grow a garden. Does anybody here grow a garden? But I want to. I'm working to. on I some tomatoes right now. Tomatoes, yeah. Mine's all flowers. Flowers. Yeah, Jeff does the vegetables, but okay. I, mine's all flowers, yeah. Everybody have garden experience at some level? Yes, plants. Yeah, plants. Yep, good. So to be able to germinate seeds, we have to realize that the germination of seeds happens when the sun is hitting them, is causing an implosion. It's impregnating with that light. So what keeps us from having the sun touch uh, the seed all the time, 24 hours? The moon. The moon. (laughs) So the moon, essentially, I was looking up some research with Dan Winter and um, I may attach it into the, the comments, the things that I recorded, but the moon with looking at some of Dan's theory or his alignment into a theory is that it was actually uh, placed here by the Andromedans and that it's hollowed out in metal inside. So there's that. But ultimately, if something gets in the way of the moon, it stops that longitudinal array, which is that perfected ray that can come down and cause implosion, right? So it's able to go through the 
the integers of golden mean ratio, which is how all the natural world is imploding here and is germinating, is growing, including us. So when you have that light, if you didn't have the moon, you would probably have, but if you if you looked at it or seen any of the theories or there's a documentary out that was awesome that showed the giant trees mm -hmm. that were around. Mm -hmm. So let's say the moon wasn't here prior, whether you believe in that theory or just that it didn't, it wasn't there yet, because sometimes there's other theories that moons kind of come off of from different type of heavenly experience or interactions or collisions. So if the moon wasn't there and these trees were like huge giant trees and in the documentary, I'll again, try to find it. Uh, they showed that the, if you really look at the mountains, that they're actually cut down large trees and they're petrified. And that we were actually living up trees because they were so huge. And we were at another level of us. We were giants. And there's definitely mm -hmm. proof of giant footprints, of giant doors, you know, all, all over this, this earth uh, world we would call earth. And yeah. Oh, that mm -hmm. it. So if we realize that what we're looking to do is really for ourselves to become earth bender, meaning to be able to easily grow gardens, to easily grow, next thing we're talking about is grids and be able to direct our energy within a grid. Um, I have on the screen here a home grid uh, as a bigger home grid, but I'm gonna talk about small ones in a second. But we are the best instrument to master and perfect to be able to work with the earth bending by getting our own longitudinal embedding into the array within the whole plane of existence. So part of our you know, exercises might be to add into your meditation that you are expanding out into the plane of existence and notice, you know, practice, you know, remote viewing and connecting with other versions of consciousness across the plane. See if you can see things. Um, as well as get within this, this spine balance of the energy centers by just going through each energy center, going into, you know, one, or maybe even start at your feet, then knees, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just by saying the number of the energy center immediately pulls your focus there, which is your lens of the perfected implosive space for consciousness to do its dance into the longitudinal array. So you practicing your focus up the energy centers and then knowing that there's a natural, larger, easy access point at this mind's eye when you implode at Planck and then spread out into the longitudinal array, then you're going to be able to easily facilitate the grounding, the growing, the moving around of your visions, your manifestations, your seed growth, everything. And more importantly, you can assist the collective to experience another definition of this longitudinal array is bliss. When you are perfected, you are moving through your Taurus, <laughs> the aura that you are, the soul that you are, meaning not everybody's in soul. Not everybody, you look at them and you talk to them are, are in soul. doesn't mean they don't have a soul, but mm -hmm. it means the avatar that they are is more locked into a program of sort that is running that. And sometimes the soul's above their head and you can see it or half hovering. And you're like, where are you? And some days they pop in and you're like, Jekyll and Hyde. You're like, well, that day he was there. But the next day he surely wasn't there. He was operating off some wounded child programming. So the more we realize that the first objective is to be in soul for ourselves. So getting grounded is earth bending. Grounding the soul. Soul is electrical energy. Source is electrical energy. You are electric. And in order to be in this playing field and get grounded, we need to go all the way through the central channel. We need to go all the way through our feet and then land on a magnetic grid. So for years, the earth is a mag has a magnetic grid. For years, when I was in my early 20s and I started actually getting the downloads that I'm supposed to be doing what I do today, I was talking about ascension and leading groups. I was doing cranial sacral with children and the body stopped talking to me when I would talk to the children's body and their family's body with my hands on them. 
and the soul started speaking. And so I'd come home after work and I would just sit and meditate in my, in my big room and um, be like, what do I do with this? And I started getting all this information about you're going to teach ascension. Um, you know, you need to start focusing on the earth star and the grounding point. And <laughs> we need you to actually, as I went on in this listening within, I started, I was also a yoga teacher and I would get dizzy at a certain point where I would ask the class to ground their roots of their tree into the earth. I started going, like one to vomit, getting dizzy. And I'm like, again, coming home to my station, like, what do I do? You know, consciousness, soul, what do you think about this? And they're like, we need you to lift the earth star. We need you to actually hover on, on the planet for a while. Well, I didn't know hovering on the planet for a while was going to be like, I don't know, 20 years. <laughs> A while, it's relative. Yeah, um, right? It is. It's like a, <laughs> like a drop. So when I look at what I'm telling you right now, hey, you need to get grounded. You can still ground through the avatar at different, what I was shown at different uh, frequencies. What I was shown was I would lift the earth star, magenta point of light from the earth. And I didn't, wouldn't do it. I would say, you know, consciousness, where do I need to, get, where does the earth starting to go right now? And I would see it go over right now. It's going over my mind's eye. But at the beginning, it really started for the groups and myself, it would really hover over the heart. And that would just show us that we were more centered, more balanced with the frequency of the fourth plane, fourth density, and of the heart itself, or energy center, I should say, not the heart, physical heart. And that at different times, even we've done it here a few weeks ago, like it might jump, you know, like you might start, like the room started feeling really wacky. <laughs> A few weeks ago when we I brought this up at Soul School and I was like, okay, everybody ask if your your grounding point needs to be adjusted. And we all adjusted and every, the room feel amazing. So let's just do that exercise right now. Oh well, wait. Yes. Can you give us more information about the Earth Star? So you you threw in their magenta point of light. So <laughs> right. what, else, what else do we need to know about the Earth Star? <laughs> so when you impregnate the Earth here with your arrival. Mm -hmm. And you ground here as a, a being, there is a access point into the earth that is seen and called as the earth star about a foot to three feet into the earth. And so that's a theory. And that earth star, um, like I said, the theory I'm talking about, I haven't heard anybody ever talk about this. So is it true? Everything's true that you believe and everything's true that you think. And has it worked and, and helped me and many? Yeah. So does that help? Yes. And the reason we called it magenta star is because I didn't know what earth star. It, it didn't tell me it was an earth star. I just saw this red thing in the ground. And then later after researching, I'm like, oh my God, it was earth star. Like that's what it was, that was. So, but if you look at my earlier books that I, manuals that I wrote, you'll see magenta star, it was earth star. So just right now, Notice, ask your consciousness, there's no wrong answer. Ask, where is your earth star right now? And if it's not in the earth, it could be along one of your energy centers, it could be above your head, it could be across the plane of existence. And then just open your eyes and you feel like you know where it's at. Where do you feel like you're set? In the earth. In the earth. In the existence. Plane of existence. I heard the words on its way to me. I don't know if that means. Okay. On its way. I don't know. Yeah. That's saw mountains. Mountains. Mm -hmm. I have a yes for a root chakra. In the root. Okay. And so that's just something you can start playing with. You know, like. If you feel off, you could say, you know, adjust my grounding point or earth star, or, you know, that's also another word, uh, phrase I would call it was grounding point because it was showing me where was I really grounded at? You know, if I was hovering, like where, where was I grounded at? Where was I showing up? And that also showed me that why a lot of the centers, including this one um, back in the day, including now, people wouldn't find me unless they were supposed to find me. I was like vibrating at a different density and even leading Ascension groups. I can remember retreats where people took photos of me and I wasn't there. So, you know, 
again, like, where are you centered? Where's your center of gravity at? And maybe not so much center of gravity, because I know I just studied a new definition of that, but you see what I'm saying? The, the Where's the super concentration of your essence showing up at? Invisible too. So with earthbending, it's about being grounded. And so we're just adding that little bit of a side note that there could be something that you go through these adjustments, but ultimately of, of where your center of your concentration of, of your soul's essence is majority. I mean, there's probably still some in the earth. There's probably still some way above your head, but like if you did percentages, maybe if you saw it over your mind's eye, it's like 90% of your soul, you know, soul's essence was vibrating at the ninth density or over the sixth density, if it was mind's eye. So, but Coming back to more simplified definition, earth bending, getting grounded through the soles of your feet, putting your feet on the earth, laying on the ground. Um, you may, um, Mama Kay had an awesome idea to get these tacks years ago, copper, to ground herself because she was hovering and she kind of still does hover. Don't you think you hover a lot? <laughs> She barely wants to take her shoes off, but yeah, she's very grounded, you know? And so you could put these copper, I do suggest if you do get some of these, um, that you kind of pound out the tip. Cause I could, when I put in my shoes, I could feel the energetic like sharpness, um, towards my foot, but there's, there's this type of grounding. If you need to like kind of create some sort of assistance for shoes being grounded, you, your thoughts are so powerful. So you could super, or recode that all your shoes are always grounding, um, that even if you're wearing shoes, you're still, you know, the array that you be goes through infinity through anything that you need to, and you're always grounded. Um, those are some things that I've done. Um, there was something else. Oh, so Hannah's not here today, but Hannah was adamant that she, you know, I, something came up with the copper because we're doing a lot of experiments with copper th through the last few months here, especially. And because copper runs electricity spirit through it, even when she's a loose wire like this, you don't need anything to actually power it. It picks up the ether itself and runs it through it. And so we, we have that technology I'll talk about in a minute with the tensor rings here. But what, what was so funny is she was adamant about wrapping or putting this in her car, her van, and then leaving part of it dragging on the ground as she drove. Wow. So yesterday she, she had given me this piece of, piece of wire. She said, did you do that yet? I'm like, no, but I went to, to the side of the, where I like to hang out on Victoria Drive. I'm waiting for my daughter to get be picked up and I'm watching the water and I was like, oh, I have that copper wire. And I was really feeling really tired. Anyways, I put it, I wrapped it up, you know, on the handle thing. And then I put it outside on the ground. And sure enough, I mean, I was like laying on the therapy. I was like blissed out in the car. I was like, Whoa. Well, I didn't drive with it. I didn't do that yet because I'm just not ready for that. Mm -hmm. um, but so this is going to be some things we're going to start playing with. If you're coming to the inventors retreat, which is the first weekend of May, that's what really a lot of this is about is di deep diving into inventions. But let's come back to the tensor rings. So copper is grounding. It's a grounder. If you have your home, which most of us are living in a home of sorts. Some of us by choice end up in a tent, which is your home living in the earth. Um, but if you have a home, there's a grounding wire that at the foundational level is part of what needs to go down to ground the home. So the electricity gets grounded, as, like, especially if a lightning struck it, that it's going to have that electricity be grounded into the earth. Uh, so essentially, even if you, let's say you have a first floor house and there's no basement, when your feet are on the earth or on the, the, the tile or et cetera of your house, there's somewhat of a grounding going on, um, but like this building, you know, it's up off the, the earth and I don't necessarily feel very grounded here. I feel kind of attuned a to that hovering feeling when I'm in this building, but coming back, this is a tensor ring. And this is like kind of highlighting the, the ether, ether bending. This thing is so powerful because you have two copper wires that are cut to sacred measure, meaning 
sacred measurement, a sacred space is defined by that when you're in it, your energy can ride the golden mean ratio integers to plonk. So if you're in a building that makes you feel good, it's a sacred space. If it's not, do some adjustments, which we're going to we talk about here. Like we painted the walls with magic paint. Um, we're going to talk about grids. These tensor rings can help create sacred space. Your body is a sacred space. <laughs> it's, a myth. it's the best home you got while you're here. And Earth itself is the home. But anyways, you got sacred measure, which uh, our tensor rings are cut to sacred measure in cubits, which all the the doorways are like of the temples and the pyramids are all measured in sacred measure. And so when you cut your your wire to sacred measure, a cubit, and then you fold it on itself. So let's say that this was sacred measure um, called the royal cubit. And I went ahead and folded it on itself. I take a drill on this side of it and I spin the drill, put this on a vice grip on a piece of wood, and then you spin it so that it looks like this. And then you take silver solder and you solder it together don't spin it too tight because it'll break and then you solder it together what happens is you have one current of electricity going one direction and another one going the opposite direction so you have charge spinning in equal and opposite directions fused together for infinity so what happens is it creates a tensor field of heavenly energy a white column of light, infinite energy pouring into your space. As well as when you sit in it, you get balance. Like you three are sitting in a tensor ring right now. All the water and the blood gets balanced and restructured. So all of these things are, again, if, if earth bending requires you to get it, that you want to be inhabiting the longitudinal field so that you facilitate bliss, you're holding all the consciousness at large, you can grow seeds really easily. What else can you do really easily? Manifest. I'm scared of growing seeds. I don't know why. I have like such an, I've bought the seeds. I've bought the soil. I've bought everything. And I have such an aversion to it because I, and I don't know why. Like I, can you, like, can you ask within, like, since you're in the presence of all of us, just ask. Because I was scared of killing it. That's what I heard. Yeah. So everything that that is, are you willing to release that fear and false belief? Yeah. And maybe imprint of when you did and you're just like hesitant. So releasing all of that and then breathing your essence back from that imprint. It's no longer active. And then expand into a vision of like just lush growth that you grow. Ooh. Cool. And that, do you have something to say? You sure. Yes, I <laughs> my um, okay, so let's let's then bring up this electroculture. Anybody heard of electroculture? Mm -hmm. So you might notice these in all of our plants here. This one was made by Teresa Edwahana. She donated them all for the plants here. And what you can do is take copper wire. And you're basically facilitating tapping into the longitudinal array, which is ether, which is tapping into that ability to create a strong, healthy field of, of space, of waves that are all working together to compress bring, and bringing the energy to plonk so that implosion happens, so the seed germinates, and so that there's growth, and so that that guy goes away to leave, <laughs> to light. So this, when you when you do a spiral, and you can even flatten the spiral, but you do a spiral, and even if you don't know how to do that little fancy spiral that she did, you can at least spiral it around a stick. And then when you put this in the earth, you want to dig it in, you know, if you've got a really tall one, I would say like at least a foot and a half into the earth. Um, but you want to let the part of the stick, maybe a third of it or a fourth of it go into the earth. It's going to go ahead and facilitate 
a better sacred space to receive the light of the sun and bring it into the earth, which then causes the plants to grow like four times the size. Fruits and vegetables get huge. So that's something um, look up, electroculture. And it's really simple and it's a great experiment for yourself and for your children to play with. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this could be one of our extra earth bending assistance. Okay, so the next thing for earth bending that I want to talk about is this grid up here. Anybody here studied feng shui? I try to be aware of it when I'm putting a room together and yeah. making sure that the mirror goes where it's supposed to and Good. that stairs are not at the front door. And <laughs> so I will, I'll, I'll do a class on feng shui next month. Um, black hat feng shui and teach you guys about that. It's really a great skill to have. But if we're looking at the overlay of a map of your house, this is something I just found today. I thought it was pretty awesome. Utilizing a bigger um, grid over the house. So this essentially is looking at a square. If your house was an L, you know, and it was missing this quadrant, you could put an anchor right here, which could be a crystal that you place right here. You can always square it up uh, or rec make a rectangle if you're working with the golden rectangle. I guess that's gone. <laughs> the just said, went. Not now. So <laughs> if what it was saying is that if you want to put a keystone crystal, and your keystone crystal could be a cluster of crystals, it could be a point crystal, um, it could be a spherical crystal, like on a stand. It could be a pyramid crystal. Okay. One of your larger, one of your larger crystals. Okay. You want to have that to be in the center, your keystone. We also see this in like Stonehenge and like rock circles. Um, so you could maybe facilitate Heather, facilitate some kind of rock circle on your land. They didn't want me to tell you that yesterday for that. Oh, yeah. So, but if we're looking at the house, then you've got your key crystal here and also could be clusters. That's what that image had was like a quartz cluster. Mm -hmm. And then in your corners, you would place either you could do other clusters or you could do, you know, certain stones that represent something like calming for your bedroom so you could have good sleep. Uh, you know, protection, uh, you know, a door, et cetera. You could kind of tap into what crystals you would want to put at the corners of the house. And on that demonstration, it actually had more of like a point, one point crystal to actually direct the energy towards the cluster. So if you're wanting to, you know, build energy and create a field of energy around your house, then, you know, you would point them in. If you're wanting, let, let's move away from the house now. Let's say you're doing at your altar a crystal grid to, again, earth bend because you're looking to manifest. You're looking to have things actualize. Then when you're using a grid, you're creating a binding, Okay. You're creating a binding that's saying, okay, I want at the highest and best potential at the center, you can write an intention. You can hold your crystal, you know, and just every day that you, you go to it, that intent and or reinstate some sort of affirmation at the center of the circle of the key, the key crystal keystone. Um, but I like, I usually have one in the center. Actually, I have like a three pager right now at the center. Um, Side note, and it works. And so you can use crystals. I actually have some circle dolphin cards that have like one word on each. And, you know, one might say expansion, one might say love, one might say prosperity. And when I put them out, uh, you know, there also can be an alignment that how many you have, let's say you actually pulled a hand of 12 out. So I have a magic box in the center that I pull the little circles out. And 
you can go even deep dive and find out like what does 12 mean to you? Like what else is being accentuated here? But ultimately when you're creating a grid at your home, you really wanna tune in about it. So for me, I go off the fly, I get in my heart, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna pull out a, you know, a stack of these little circle dolphin cards and I'm gonna lay them out and I lay them out in a specific direction. So if I'm going grounding, then the, I'm grounding kind of like I had pointed stones to the center. If I'm dispersing, then I go counterclockwise as I lay them out. So just realize like every little aspect of you, your ability to work with a grid and essentially your earth bending skills, it means something. So at the very end, when you're done, you might ask like, is this complete? You know, Sabel just gave an example that it was complete and it was time to dismantle something. Right. And it could have been that it just wasn't meant to be there at all, but also at a higher level, it's like it was complete. Right. And so we can always I like to look at what's right about this, you know, kind of have that optimistic attitude about everything. And like what's right about this is that something was complete and I folded it in. So just also check periodically. Like I have one that's laid out right now and it's probably been laid out like three days. Some will last months, some will last a couple days, some might last a couple hours. It's like, it's done. But what I suggest, if you're doing any kind of grid work at your altar, with stones, with crystals, with cards, with intentions, that you intend they're clear or clear them with a pendulum. Um, and also find out when they're complete and when they're done. But also to not do too many of them all over the place. I want to suggest, yeah. that, um, I feel it's very important to either pendulum or muscle test, like which crystals and where, because I, I always want to get that feedback yeah. that I'm using the right thing in the right place. In my so along with that, identifying exactly what you want on that crystal grid and then not having too many is that you know, it's an open portal. So you want to be able to pay attention to one grid and really give it your focus because the key is here to focus. You're going to master more when you focus. And I'm definitely one that needs to work on that because I'll have like 12 projects going on at once and all sorts of downloads and somehow I implement them all. And, <laughs> but that's, <laughs> that's the way I've been working this lifetime, but I am talking to myself, especially about that. And I had really had to do that with the crystal grids because if, if I have too many out, it can get wonky. It can feel um, chaotic. If you have crystals just kind of, you know, randomly placed everywhere, like someone donated these the other day. And, you know, for me, like putting them away in a bag, putting them away in a drawer and a cloth, if I'm not going to be using them is really important because then I won't feel them. But if, if I have them out, like for me, this, this, this bag did the job, even though it's clear. I was like, Oh, got to bag those up, you know? <laughs> um, but just having them laid out, if you were here in the past few weeks, you might've saw them, they were sitting on the selenite tablet. So I have a selenite tablet and I highly suggest you get one. There's some at celestial circle on Tampa road. And they're just so great because I, everything goes there to clear, you know? And it's just, a, it's again, this kind of like safety net to kind of catch things that does clearing for them. And, you know, then I can go ahead and bag them up or, you know, be done. Okay. Speaking of focus, is it okay to turn that down or off? Or yes. It's just, so, like, your I like that you're talking about focus. I feel like I'm so flowy that I can't. Like I have all all the downloads and all the ideas and everything, and that's what I was intending to to come today was like, how do I? I need to like, I, I'm so busy like just floating around everywhere that I the things that I want to accomplish accomplish yeah. get a little. This week went by so fast. I had so many plans for this week, and I'm like, it's Friday. How did that happen? Yeah, but I do a lot of things. That, it's not like I'm not doing, but 
there are things that I goals that I want to, and I don't get to them. And that's a, so I would highly suggest journaling and making a list every day. And maybe not even the journal is a high priority, but the list. That's what's been said, but I've been so resistant to the list every day. I'm like, okay, write the list. And then I find all the reasons to not write the list. Sticky notes next to your bed is what I do. Um, and if I have a list and then I muscle test or intuit, you know, what's the high priority I have to get done today? What should I do first? And then at least that kind of divine masculine brain and, and strategy, I do get things done that were like top of the list, high priority. And then the rest gets put on the back burner to the next day, you know, and I have running lists. I actually have running like probably four running lists on my phone right now too. Any other suggestions for anybody to help get things done? Well, my husband sends me a list every day because I don't do it. So he's <laughs> maybe that's what you need to clear. Well, yeah, because I feel like he's like <laughs> well, so. Like so kind of for me, for for you is to ground first of all, because if you're feeling really scattered and you're getting all of this information, you might be struggling to process all of it too, and to really hear what's the highest priority for today. But the other part of it too is if you're going to make a list and you have more to accomplish than you can in a day, and this is good for you too. Mm -hmm. um, t there's this, there's an Abraham trick of here's what I have to do today on this side of the paper. And then here's the majority of the list that's on this side of the paper that the universe is going to take care of. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. And that I can yeah. just put it out of my head because these things make me really happy mm -hmm. and it raises my vibration and I'm excited to work yeah. on them. And all these things that I really don't want to look at or deal with anyway, it's okay. Cause if I'm focused on these things that are making me feel good, then I'm just going to give those to the, to my manager yes. of the universe yes, and team. it's going to start to take care of itself mm -hmm. and then all your stuff's going to start to come off your list oh, i like that yeah. thank you and that's a great journal to make mm -hmm. to publish and the manager may be you the other version of you out yeah, there that mm -hmm. may come back into you and, and you've accomplished something well i wasn't that like something, but... before i could do those things but i'm right. just in this constant state of bliss that i'm just like ah right now that's not fun <laughs> and maybe like she said build into your new kind of affirmation is i'm so glad that all those things are getting done by somebody right now right yeah but i don't yeah yes. i'm so glad that i don't have to be the one that does that yes. it's just taking care of <laughs> but sometimes things on my list if i ignore them long enough they don't matter anymore right they resolve <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they resolve like themselves they're irrelevant mm -hmm. well the more we talk about it it's because my husband is constantly grinding on the list that is just like life doesn't have to work like that like it can be easy so i yes. think that's the resistance that he wants yeah. to be like knock it like eh, and i'm just like no it it's in the it list done. you're in the flow yes um, yes that's exactly it that's well, exactly it's, it. it's the difference between our program for being action oriented mm -hmm. instead of ease or flow oriented or energetically mm -hmm. oriented mm -hmm. that we're in that mindset of if I'm in the right headspace, all this stuff is just going to work. Mm -hmm. And most people in the world are, if I don't grind it out yes. Yes. and churn, nothing's going to happen. Yes. And, and what's the last thing that happens energetically? Is it a high vibration or a low gross matter vibration? What happens last? For Ener me, I just feel like or gross matter. I just feel it. But then it's just in life, you mean? Gross matter. Gross matter. No, well, that's what, gross matter is the last thing that happens. It, it was a thought first, mm -hmm. right? So ultimately, everything is already done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is why us inhabiting our entire spine and then the whole field is so powerful because then Abraham's techniques are just like boom, boom. When you do, <coughs> you are the master of that flow. And then all of a sudden you're so grounded in your body avatar and the earth and the whole plane of existence. And you just got synchronicity after synchronicity happening mm -hmm. because you are literally flowing into those golden mm -hmm. mean spiral That's synchronicities. And so hearing you direct and you, it's, it hits me and I'm like, wait a minute, that's me right now. Like everything that in my world has shifted and there's a very very concrete way that everyone wants me to go through a list of 
jobs and security and the insurance and all the stuff because my marriage family changed. But my flow is I am going to take care of myself. I have my help. If, if everyone's list comes at me, it's almost like I don't want it to affect me because my flow is so important and it's carrying me that all the other noise, I'm like, I have to like hear my dad say something and I'm like, okay, okay. But then I'm going to go upstairs, meditate and maybe go for a walk. Mm -hmm. Like it's not my avoidance. It's just, I have to release that list and the pressure of someone else interjecting their beliefs and programs on me because I'm like, if I tell you that I don't need it right now, they're going to be like, something's wrong with you. So I just hear it. And then I go for a walk or I sit outside or I journal. <laughs> I do something that brings me back to what I need to be. Yeah. So you're holding space yeah. for them to say what they had to say, but you just, yeah. mm -hmm. well, and so you, thank you, you know what your reality is. Yeah. You both know what your reality is. Mm -hmm. So other people's perception of your reality doesn't matter. Your perception of your reality matters. And you already know what that is, which is, oh, I don't need to worry about this stuff. And maybe we also shouldn't be giving other people lists. We should give ourselves <laughs> lists and let other people right. give themselves lists. And I, I'm guilty of, you know, mentioning a list to someone this week for them to do. And yeah, it's a take mirror. That back. Yeah, you know, mirror come back at you. If you're giving a list, you're going to get a list from somebody else. And sometimes it's still the old guilt of the program. It's like almost like when I hear things, it's like, okay, I, I forgot that that's the way that the world works. And so let me go. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, I have to self check. And I'm like, no, you heard it. It's not you any longer and come back over here. So I have to kind of, um, cause it's very easy to go into the whole, okay, let me, let me go do that. Let me get on the computer. Let me, let me. And then it's like the moment that I take pause and, and I'm like, how do I feel? Okay. The moment that I know how to self-regulate and it does not feel good. I have to switch. I have to release it and do something that, that good. does. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which gets you back grounded in the longitudinal array. Bliss. When you're in bliss, you're grounded in the field. And as long as you don't have anything like going to go ahead and tell you otherwise, like a false belief or some other wound that you haven't really dealt with, you're going and it's going to come mm -hmm. because it's all you. Yes. You only know where you hit something that is actually purposeful. If it's biofeedback showing you something that's a glitch in the system. Okay. Use it. You know, whether it's mirror, mirror, like where am I still Doing that to others, you know, can I go ahead and clear that and upgrade and neutralize and stabilize that energy center to be a star point again and so I can have my lounge tool array? <laughs> or, you know, what what do I need to find? Where is that coming from? You know, where's the the detail? Why why in the Akash, which is ether, which is the longitudinal array, why is that crystalline particle plasmoid just showing up that's holding information that just said, oh no, my, 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 you know. Oh, I was two. Okay. Thank you, biofeedback. It's such a perfected system. And then I can move on after getting the understanding. And I want to highlight the app because I feel it really is amazing because I can be lazy, not a negative word, just chilling. Easy. But easy, easy lazy. Than lazy. Right. I don't <laughs> mind the word lazy. I don't have negative. It's, like, okay. it's all good. Uh, but I know that the app is there for me. So if there is something that comes up, like say I'm being triggered by lists or whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. I know the app is there for me. And so I can just take that time and put that intention in there. And yeah, it's a grid, you know, mm -hmm. and that's and what I was going to say about grids in general, you know, your cards are essentially grids, your, you know, cards, positive message cards, your crystals, your, your grid itself. The stability, whatever brings you stability with that information that accesses greater understanding, which that app can, but that list that's generated, you pull your cards, et cetera. Okay, it's done. Like you, if you're setting up a grid and your intentions in the middle of everything always works out for you and you're in your flow and everything's always taken care of on all your lists, there it is. Now you go up. This is holding the grounding. This is holding the earth in place. Okay, I got that. 
so you were saying the, the crystal grid with like the oracle card mm -hmm. around or whatever is it's like the simil similarity with the app that it's something you can place whatever you want to place in to to deal with it yeah this is it. dealing with a lot that's why sometimes when you're when it's done it'll say like you'll ask you know do i need to fold that grid in yeah it's done fold it in and a lot of times if you did have an affirmation or an intention inside it you'll notice it's already done like so it's done like move along if it was something like specific you needed accomplished so it's holding in the ether it's literally expanding out whatever is written on there and in this geometric pattern it's expanding out vibrations of tonal word that actualization so it's bringing it to you because it's holding that vibration mm -hmm. that's why i also wanted to bring up you know journals i'm speaking to mama oh, sharon no. shannon that when you write in your journal if you have woes in your journal from like anger or sadness or noticing stuff find out if you need if it's time to take it to the burn pile i have mine okay I, uh, well because we have the new moon on saturday so i every time i'm journaling i have a separate sheet of paper and i'm writing my releases and i'm just stacking them and then that is my monday yeah i put a pause on them so that way once they're out they're not like still lingering around me until then yeah. but because, and that's why our new level of journaling comes about all of us is that we really only write because writing is a binding. It's a curse and a spell. When we curse it, it's a curse. And when we spell, it's spelling of, of a binding. That's why it was created. That's why your unconscious documents <laughs> that are sitting around, like get rid of them or reprogram them. That is if you're really bad spelling. That there's some... Then you say my spelling is perfect and, you know, you just re-identify what i'm so saying you could do this writing and the spelling of good things yeah mm -hmm. actually no but i'm like i'm sorry would you say you could do like the like writing and the, to learn the how spelling to spell i did purposely yeah. what you spell want them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> i don't spell them the way i was taught i spell them the way i hear them no. mm -hmm. but new moons are usually for intention setting Mm -hmm. So if you're going to burn those on I the know. moon, be cautious if they're not the intentions that you want to put out and there. And eclipse if we're talking this Monday. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Do you know why new moons are in? Let me tell you the science of it. So if there wasn't a moon, game on. It's all sun. It's all light. It's all unified field. It's all bliss. The moon creates the polarity. Creates the waning and the waxing and the, the sun limiting itself. So on a new moon, when it's the moon's actually, you know, right, you know, it's filling. So you're actually either weakening that longitudinal array with the moon or you're strengthening it when it's not we'll there. Before, so get rid of it before. We're, we're I'm, doing, I'm just, just saying, moon. yeah, I would do it on the full moon because the full moon is releasing. Okay. What's that? You that was talking about the moon being placed there? Or yeah. Or which I need. Did you just say that today? Yeah, you can, yeah, let, go, just, you can let go. Of it, so yeah, you can okay. Go. Yeah, let it go. Let's just see it dematerializing it right now. Yeah, we're gonna let it go. Anything in your home that needs to be dematerialized, just watch it dematerialize. Well, and any bindings. Point, like you don't have to wait for a certain yeah. day. Like if you're mm -hmm. like, no, I need to let this go now. Yeah, I'm gonna burn it today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mama doing it. Create your own ritual. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Amen. There's something else. In there. Did you just say something? Oh, but I want to learn more about that moon being the fake and the place and all oh, that. Yeah, At some just, point, I don't know. Right remember, all right realities are true. Everything that's said is true. So if you say that, then that in in the field, if you line up into that, then it's true. I'm not sure about my truth. About that's what I mean. Like, ask like about it. More you know, ask about it to, to decide. Oh, there's something else. Okay, so the books. Oh, key language, key alphabets, like the Hebrew, um, Aramaic. When you, Dan did a study, oh, it's really awesome. When you actually see and you shine light on, as you're uh, at the center point where your plasma is self-organizing itself at Plum, when they did a shadow up the top of the Taurus, they found every letter of these these beginning languages. So the reason that the prayers are being done. Is that the case with runes too? Probably, because that's Aramaic, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Nordic. Nordic, yeah, Nordic, yeah. Nordic, yeah. yeah. So 
it's literally the language was used in prayer to get you to implosion point and to go out and to be able to take your memory through death, take yourself through into the longitudinal ray. So that's what's so powerful about these ancient scripts and like drawing them and working with them. Can you repeat that? Mm. So the one strong slide that I'll, I'll attach it to this live um, is a Hebrew, the Hebrew alphabet. And that each letter, the when the light is shining at the top of the Taurus, you can see each letter. And that's why, even if you look at your like your your sacred geometry, and you can see how they're also self-embedding right there, embedding, embedding to implosion. It's pretty exciting. <laughs> okay, so the but the bindings, the papers, getting good at starting to write only what we want because that's going to infinitely expand. That's why, you know, maybe seven years ago here, I had a nice set of books, you know, being collected through the years and people giving nice books about healing arts. And spirit was like, get them out. Get all the books out. And I'm like, oh, really? Get the books out. We literally walked out of class that day. Do you remember this? And in the center of the road, there was a book burning. What? <laughs> So the bigger being was like, get it out. Yeah. And so we did. Um, and there's still not only really books here, except the books that have been published by myself and those who have helped publish like six people. So write what you want on your books. Because they're bindings, because they're squares. And squares are connected to the earth bending, to the holding things in place. It's powerful medicine we got. Mm -hmm. We got all the tools. Mm -hmm. Everything's already taken care of, but we're coming into this level of our alchemy and really coming into alignment to making a better world for ourselves and for all beings. And that's fun. And our children need this. Yes. We have got to restore our own inner child and their, their you know, willingness, or not willingness, but their connection to their curiosity and their imagination. Okay. Uh, let me make sure I talked about everything I wanted to. And we'll do a meditation. So getting grounded, super powerful. Start your day, getting barefoot, lay on the earth, go to the crystalline sands if you like the crystal grounding. Um, just make it a practice to really breathe through your Taurus every rising, getting grounded and knowing that as that grounding takes place through the, the totality of your feel, your spine, that you have such a high potential to stay in your bliss, to have things come into synchronistic order a lot quicker and easier. And then if it feels aligned to do, you know, an external grid, some of your grids I, I was getting to was maybe outside. Um, you know, you may choose to even just taking, I've taken like, just rocks, you know, like tumbled rocks mm -hmm. and they're powerful. And I didn't put any piece of paper on it or anything. I mean, I was making money for our group doing the, the, um, the flower circles. Oh, yeah. mm. Okay. I just need to do, um, the intention in the keystone the other day I had to clean my house, <laughs> did my sage, um, but I have rows and clear ports in my windows of my bedroom, everywhere upstairs, everywhere downstairs. That's my flow of space. I just know I need to do the middle and I know exactly where that would go, but I'm working on remembrance of self-love and compassion in my home and for myself. So that way, whenever my body flows into a room, I can be yes. <laughs> reminded of it. So I wrote down that I need to do the middle of the keystone. Nice. And remember, if you do it, an external, or not external, but a grid along the perimeter of your home, also check that, you know, like, is it time to fold that in? And what it does is it accordions, you know, it's like a spider web. It brings all <clears throat> those imprints <clears throat> when you fold it in and kind of cleans the space. So usually after someone comes for a soul work or something, I'll check at the end of your session and say, like, is there anything at their home that needs to be done? And a lot of times spirit really wants the, all the crystals to be brought in, cleansed, and then reset. Um, 
because you've changed when we change so much, like which essentially soul rip can do, a deep meditation can do, guided meditation, you know, things shift and so may your grids because they really are holding this kind of like external extension of you. Yeah. Cool. And what time is it? Because my phone died. 203. Okay, so let's wait. What were you saying? I missed it. Oh. What were you saying about blocks? Said something about blocks or something. Said something like rocks. <laughs> rocks. Rocks, maybe. Is that what it was? Probably Just there. like that doing an outside grid. Okay. Even with some tumbled stone that I've done. Okay. Like I was asking before COVID for like a prosperity method that could help everybody here at the center and those that we were connected to in community um, move into a new way of working with money. And the the group, I don't know how it all came about, but it got brought into our awareness that we were going to do these flower circles using the elements of four elements of fire or fire earth. What we're talking about right now, all four elements. And this flower circle used the the elements and a grid to go ahead and the outer um, fires, the eight fires would donate $500 and all eight, five hundred dollars. So it's eight times five hundred, four hundred or four thousand. Four thousand. So then the flat, the water in the middle was one water got to receive that money, and then the waters of other flower circles would all move to the outskirts again, and then the earth would like lead, lead like group talks here and there for us. Anyways, the element, the circle, kind of rotated. <laughs> in and it around itself so that you were gathering new fires of the people who wanted to donate 500 and then you just kept rotating every so you know few months and receiving the outcome of being being able to sit in a community like that and hold space so as that came about i was just working with stones outside and it for me that was in my reality brought all that about I'm just saying like, you don't even need an intent, a big like piece of paper. You just have this strong intention, but realize when you place those stones down, mm -hmm. you know, you becoming aware that you are this powerful being always have been, always will be. And you are holding the longitudinal array. Like everything we do is so powerful, but we're how we're inter interacting in space. I have a, yeah. Two points. One, um, when I do my grounding and I think of the earth star, now this could just be one thing I learned, but yet still part of a program. Mm -hmm. I thought that the Earth Star, I mean, I've always, always, what, a year or so I've been doing it, but that it's platinum. Is that? Probably, that's what I mean. It's probably just some school, which is awesome. There's but, no wrong turn about but, it. Yeah, but it, I could, it could really be anything. That's, yeah, and it's really what, to you, what is it? I'm, what do you see, oh. you know? And then were you going to say something about that colored, your little play thing for the uh, tour, tour of the field? That oh, I just love this. I was, yeah. yeah, I just, I had got this from the market and I just love it because love it, it shows the Taurus, you know, to children, especially. So, you know, this is what the soul that you are looks like. So we're like the main part. So we're, I mean, this is like your spine. Little, yes. So you get to see the way, you know, you're moving in both directions. And it feels really good. <laughs> and all that coming out is um, self organizing itself. Self organizing back up itself. into the bottom of the Taurus. Uh -huh. And for, us, for our field. Yes. And then beyond the Taurus bodies. and into the, the longitudinal array of space, of okay. consciousness itself, ether. Okay. So, like when you put an intention out and it goes out beyond your Taurus, beyond this six foot diameter. Yeah. So that's representing us. Yeah. Our your so, the soul. Because when I watched your video, when you had that a week or so ago. So I just had then one question because we had just done, we've gone back to a, a, a point in our life. I don't know if you were here, but I know you and I were sitting over there. We went back to any point in our mm -hmm. life where um, there may have been a fracture. Mm -hmm. So looking at that, it made me think, so if I thought of a moment in time in the seventh grade, mm -hmm. am I really thinking of something within that? Okay. That's it. I'm glad you're doing this. That was fun. <laughs> this is the or aura balancing class. class. Guys. Ooh, I love this. Okay. First. <laughs> so let's say this is your turtle field, your soul. And in the center is now. 
okay? In the middle is now, along your spine. Out here is your birth, the conception at six feet. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if something happened at your birth and there's a plasmoid out here, an energy kink, a bound up of light codes of information that was bound here because of strong yeah. what? Resistance or attachment. Right. right. And what is that? Programs, programs, Feelings. Focus. Emotion. Yeah. Yeah. Charge. Yes. Yeah. So the master knows how to master charge. You're a master of your emotion. Mm -hmm. So that's bound up information, thought, right? And char the charge is out here. So if you're seven, then set, let's say, and what is it? What was it? The For me, it was seventh grade. Seventh grade. But well, it was when I turned it. Are you talking about what it was? Yeah, I just want a real example. It's oh, fun. it's a perfect example because you just mentioned the square. So those that weren't here, I was walking down a hallway in the seventh grade and I had just moved to this new town school seventh grade even and so i turned a corner of a hallway there was a square sign that said vote for margie well that vote for margie wasn't me it was for someone else in my grade whose name was margie i interpreted that as there's already someone else here named margie there's probably not room for me now i'm not thinking this as a 12 year old yeah, right. but in hindsight mm -hmm. and so i allowed that to let me take a step back because there was always already someone there. Mm -hmm. But she, that moment was captured on that sign, right. on that square. And then you redefined it. I and redefined you it. it. A new yeah. understanding, which is, so it's always in the, what, the upgrade. Yeah. The upgrade was that, oh, look, that's me. I mean, I saw, I saw a healed version of me as in not another Margie. I saw it as me, Margie. Yeah. And it had nothing to do with her. It all had to do with me. Of you, right? yes. 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 Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And instead of only seeing it as separation, as yeah. separation, I saw it and it became. Do you feel like it was on the left of you or the right of you, in front of you or back of you? It was in front of me as I turned, I turned a right corner mm -hmm. and I faced it. Okay. So that could be masculine on the right side of the brain, no, the right side of the body and then left side of the brain. So let's just say we're just for this th example that it, she was around 12 years old in seventh grade. So, you know, if you've got, let's say you're 40, you know, and out here's your conception, your birth. Well, if this is 12 years old, if you're 20, it's more halfway. If you're 40, then that energy that you're looking at could be really close to your spine or inside the body. Mm. So when you're just looking at plasma and how it kind of bundles itself up, it's like a tree ring, tree rings. And where it happened, where that density is kind of heavy and, and coiled up. Oh, that's good. No there was no charge on that, but somehow this phone call turned it, <laughs> turned it back on. You're powerful wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes Mercury retrograde stuff happening here. All, yeah, these, yeah, all these electronic things going crazy. So once you get the understanding that that was actually another version of you, all of this comes undone and it comes back to middle. It self-organizes itself. She understands now, so it comes undone. Mm -hmm. And it comes and reorganizes back in the Taurus. So that's the power of this work that we're doing and the power of us when we do have biofeedback that shows up, find the conception point 12 years old so you can go, oh, no, we're done with that. Let me get a new understanding. Mm -hmm. And then it comes back through. And then does that flowing. only go out the top and in the bottom or both. does it go both? both. Okay. Which yeah. is really hard for me to visualize. Yeah. To be and you can kind of think about your grounding your essence back in. Mm -hmm. Right? right, or you're bringing something up from the earth. Right, but it's happening simultaneously. Yes, right? absolutely. So does it always go clockwise? And then if I'm like looking at it front, it's clockwise and clockwise and as I'm like that spiral. So that like, as I would literally turn around, it would always be clockwise depending on what direction I'm facing. Does that it, make sense? Well, if you think about charge and the way things are spinning, you've got clockwise that's grounding, counterclockwise that's dispersing. Okay, so they're both happening. Yes. And that's why you're, you're, you know, you're powerful. Everything you think, everything you say, 
it's like game on. And is the earth dispersing and the sun is grounding? Is that how you put the two words? The earth is magnetic, so it's dispersing. Yes. And the, the electrical charge of the sun is grounding. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so good. Good. Good one. <laughs> Powerful. We're getting it. <laughs> this is a big topic. This, what we're talking about, all children need this. Okay. I just love this thing. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to go ahead and let's, let's do a guided meditation. Go ahead and relax. Get your, your relaxed zone. I'm going to make this little mini grid for us. The highest and the best. I thought the small tensors were only bracelets. I'm going to get some to put under my uh, pyramids. Yeah, and you can put them on your energy centers and they'll bring you to balance like that. Oh, do you have them here? Them here? I'm going to get another load. Oh, right now I'm making three you. inventions with them and I don't. Oh, okay. But I will get some this week. I just talked to okay, the guy on yes. yesterday. I want some too. Yeah. Okay. So laying back, taking some really deep breaths. Align yourself with your hands to your thymus gland if it feels right to you. Your hands to your high heart. And really just attune yourself to a magical intention, whether that intention is, I live the best life always, or it's something specific. Connect in with an intention. And then let that intention just be, whether it expands out, whether it is holding space, don't while we do this, just let it be now that you have done that and relax your arms, your hands where you want them. And we're gonna go ahead and as we take some deep breaths now up our central channel, take a second breath through your mouth, to bring a lot of that into your heart space. And then exhale out your mouth, letting it all out. Audible exhale. Again, inhaling up the central channel. Second breath of air through the mouth, open the heart. Hold the breath slightly, squeeze it up to the top of the head for activating the piezo crystals in the pineal gland. And then exhale, release. <sighs> Inhale again. Now we're going to count to five. You're going to squeeze your root, your belly button, your rib cage. Number four, you're going to open your heart. <sighs> five, you're going to squeeze it to the top of the head. Hold. And then exhale. One, two, relax your belly, your rib cage, your root. <sighs> four and five. Again, inhale, squeeze up. One, two, three, four. Take a step in. Five, hold it slightly. Eyeballs slightly up. Smile, exhale, release. Four, five. Again, a few more. Really get that rhythm going. Activating the longitudinal field or the longitudinal array embedding as you go all the way up to the top of the head. Squeeze and hold. And as you exhale on the next one, expand your awareness beyond the body, beyond your aura, beyond in front of you, beyond to the edgeless edge behind you, beyond to the left, and beyond to the right. As you expand omnidirectional, omnipresent through the field as the consciousness of bliss that you truly be. We're gonna invite a blessing from the sun, bringing the love and the glory and the grace of sparkling, sparkling light, crystalline light that activates all of our seeds, all of our wishes, our 
hopes, our, our dreams, our intentions of this now and all nows. And then the blessing of the receptivity of the magnetic grid of Mother of Sophia Tara Gaia Earth, Aria. Whatever level receptivity of the grandmother receives that beautiful crystalline longitudinal array, activating and germinating all your seeds, your garden grows. As that activation of germination, let your actualizations of your manifestations, of your intentions of now and all nows be represented by growing trees, flowers, fruit trees, vegetable gardens. Imagine this growth all taking place in beautiful golden mean ratio bliss spirals expanding, reaching back up to the sun. And the natural ebb and flow as those are completed, some of those trees, et cetera, flowers in your awareness, just watch how they naturally lose their leaves and they go back to the earth to recycle into fresh, rich compost. Upon that grandscape, omnipresent, omnidirectional view of this growth, go ahead now and see your intention that we began with actualized. Notice as many details that you can. If it feels good to see those details with the grace of bliss, of the smile, the balanced joy of the unified field, smile and generate that perfected vibrational sequencing that bliss gives through the longitudinal array of space and of the smaller longitudinal arrays in the brain and in the heart. As you see those details and the expression of bliss vibrates and crystallizes them into a sequence that brings them into synchronicity, into presence. As we come into this assignment, one more instruction is being given that I want you to think about someone in your life that you would love to see blessed, blissed, given something that you know that they are desiring a betterment, whether it be a group of people like children or someone you know, let that come to your awareness. Who could you assist right now because you have access to all space. Imagine that they are receiving that which they are desiring, receiving the access to their bliss. even if that is them getting a better understanding, understanding of who they really are. Imagine those other souls smiling, radiating beautiful light and their gardens growing around them.
as those beings receive, bringing your awareness back to your own. And as you're holding space and this omnipresence, intending that all that you desire is happening in the perfect time and perfect way. That your presence is the stability of this longitudinal space array to gift you each of those desires and intentions in the sequence that you would have desired them to arrive to that focus. Anything that needed to be cleared or cleansed simply is as you come into that knowing Imagine now that you're reaching back into this space, into this present moment, and gathering that beautiful omnipresent spiral of light, this liquid love light that you are. Imagine that it starts coming back towards your crown of the avatar. And that you deepen your breath to gather all your energy back into the avatar, whether it feels like it's coming into the crown and simultaneously coming up towards the bottom of the torus. Take some deep breaths. Gather that spin and that charge of the light that you are into every little sparkle cell. Filling up all your cellular makeup with liquid love light that is sparkling, ready to be received by those actualizations today, showing you that indeed you are present, you are occupying this space, you are bliss incarnated, and that your presence is the actualization marker that brings the heavenly etherical state to earth itself. Take some deep breaths, begin to wiggle your toes and wiggle your fingers, wiggle your nose. Notice that when you wiggle your nose, what do you want that to be able to do? What your pineal gland gives off this electricity called piezoelectricity that when the rhomboid crystals are squeezing at the top of your inhales when we're doing our ascended breath, it's bringing a spark to your blueprints. So when you twinkle your nose, those piezo crystals there, what do you want them to do? Get a download like about that. And then when you're done, come on up. If it's your first time, remember the chair has a remote control. You can pull yourself up. Since today is all about grounding or earth bending, you just did massive earth bending. I highly suggest that you touch the physical ground, make an earth grid. Does anyone want to share anything? Not I completely understand. Bliss mode of stillness. Mine's just love, joy, and happiness is all I am bringing into my space and holding. I can't wiggle my nose, but I felt the sparkles. <laughs> <laughs> Good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Love, joy, and happiness. Yeah. Anybody else? I have a um the visual of like my home. My home and the like a garden, like the backyard of the garden and the trees and the fruits and veggies. And I've, I've never really want, been inspired or wanted to do that myself in the past, but now like hearing you talk about it and just the wave that we're coming into and if I had, you know, Martin to help grow and do all that. Yeah. He could do the growing Absolutely. and I can do the enjoying. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that, you know, just kind of tuning into that. Cool. 
Did you get the nose thing? For my nose intention, I just said, um, bring me in light and love tonight. Thank you. Also, you know, just to grow, to grow stuff. Yes. Right. And the nose took is just a, that miracles come true. Yes. Oh, I love that. I'm working on one. <laughs> like a bunny. <laughs> Anybody else want to share anything? Describe it out. I'll share a little bit. My, uh, I received an email about a week or so ago. It was, but it was for a yearly fundraiser that we participated in for 20 some years on an after school program in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's just, they have a yearly fundraisers in America, mm -hmm. right? Because there's all these needs. But when I read this year's, I could tell that I was triggered. I was triggered that it's still something still going on. And, you know, my first thought was, what the freak? Are there just po corrupt politicians all around? The fact that there just is more needs again this year. But I knew enough that it was a trigger and that I could see it with love. And, of course, um, you know, put it on my calendar so I know and I can call in, you know, because I want to be able to give a nice donation. But with that, today when you said that, I immediately went there. I've never done any kind of a remote viewing. Mm. And in just that one, two minutes that you gave us, yeah. I saw how I could just by visioning it. Um, and I saw it, I saw it raised like above because it's like just a poor part of a city in Brazil, put it that way. So you can imagine how that would look still, right? Because my first thought was, just go get a bunch of land elsewhere. But if the children that are being having this aftercare after school program, if that's where they live, you can't bus them out an hour. Mm -hmm. And um, but it, this time I, I just saw it strong and rebuilt. Yes. And I saw lots of nature around it. And I saw it like elevated, like another frequency. Yeah. Like it was just, it was a good lesson for me. And when I just felt the grace that I was able to let that be my vision, not even thinking of it one moment prior to beginning the meditation, but how, yeah. So and thank that's, you. yeah, and that's a couple of minutes that we get to gift the world. Mm -hmm. Like we are the, we're bringing it through, you know, I, we're, I feel like we're here to bring all things new through our own yeah. vision. Um, yeah, so I started the meditation with um, the intention just that everything that I am creating happens easily. Then just right, right, without effort, effortlessly, you know. Um, and then at the end, when when you started with the sounds, I just had this visual of walking through this garden that I had already been visualizing during the meditation, and that everything. Like I would touch like the plants and like the flowers were falling down and every plant that I would touch, I would get this visual of like, oh, that's this house or that's this project. And like, as I would smell a flower, I would get the details yes. of whatever that pro like, this is the actualization of all those things. But like walking through, like, you know, when you walk through a garden, you just kind of like, I, at least I do, like I touch everything. I would touch all the leaves and the flowers and everything. So as I would touch all of it, I would get this visual of what that represented yeah. and, and the actualization of that. Which is Earthbender. It was fun. That's yeah. Earthbender. Yeah. <laughs> really cool. Yeah. Highly recommend you guys really touch everything and really work with the trees. They said that this morning. Please have us and work with us. Like talk to them. I was like driving there, like, what's your name? Henry Joyce. <laughs> Love you. And I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> wow. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Really there was some new honeysuckle in the neighborhood recently. Oh. And so I've been like, stop. Like, I'm sure if the people were so in their house. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> they were like, what's that lady doing out on the sidewalk? <laughs> I saw the house. I, I, I walked. As I walked, I went, because it's my favorite smell. Mm -hmm. And I, and what? I turned around like I'm talking to yes. shrubs, right? I'm like, and I'm like this. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love you. I love you. Oh, my God.